This lesson combines some information from 3.1 and 3.2. It's mostly about adding and subtracting multi-digit numbers, uh, specifically uh, decimals. And the way we're going to uh, start talking about this is reviewing what place value is, because this will play an important role in how you add and subtract these larger numbers. What the place values are. Uh, actually, first we're going to do the do now. Um, no, we're not. Never mind. Forget that. So take a look at this chart, and you can see it represents the place values all the way up to billions and then millions and thousands and hundreds, tens, ones. And then we go into decimals, and that first position is the tenth, the second position is the hundredths, and the third position is the thousandths. Um, so when we add and subtract decimal numbers, we're going to be lining up by all these place values and then adding or subtracting. But it's really important that they're lined up correctly. But real quickly, let's uh, just talk about how you would write some numbers in digits when you're given the words. So this first one is 24,968 and 900 hundredths. So that would be written as... 24,000 comma 968 and it's 9 hundredths so it's not the next digit over but it's two digits over this means a zero is a placeholder and then the 9 goes in that hundredths place right here's the 9 it's going to go in this spot this spot gets a zero this gets the hundredth and we're done. Alright, let's take a look at number two. Eight billion. So that's going to be here with a comma. 253 million. 253 million, comma. 28,000. So there's no 100,000, but there is 28,000. And there are no hundreds, tens, or ones, so it's going to be zero, zero, zero. And there's no decimal, so we'll just put point zero. And lastly, 50,000, 25, and one-tenth. That's going to look like 55,000. So we have one in the ten thousands and the thousands. And uh, 25, so there's no hundreds, but there is... 20 and 5, and that's one tenth. Oops, sorry, that should be a decimal. So I'll put a decimal in there, and one tenth goes in the first spot after the decimal, right? So in that tenth spot goes the one. 25, and then 55 is in the, the thousandth spots. So just wanted to give you a quick review on, on what those place values are, because that's going to be important as we start to learn how to add and subtract. So there's one key point that I want you to write down. It's really, really important. In order to correctly add and subtract multi-digit numbers, you have to line up the digits by place value. So go ahead and take a moment to write that down. In order to correctly add and subtract multi-digit numbers, line up the digits by place value. And you're going to see what we mean by that in the following examples. So, let's take a look at the first example. Julie and Paolo are building a treehouse out of wood boards. Julie has a board that is 8 meters long. I'm sure that's important. And Paolo has a board that is 3.1 meters long. What is the combined length of their boards? 
So I want you to think about a few steps that you uh, should think about when you are solving a problem like this. The first is step one. You have to decide, is this an addition problem or a subtraction problem? So you have to look in the problem and see if there's a word that helps you decide that. And in this case, I see the word combined. And combined almost always means add. All right, so this is an addition problem. And the word that helps us figure that out is combined. Step two says consider making a bar diagram of the situation. And a bar diagram just simply helps us visualize whether we are adding or subtracting. So in this situation, the bar diagram is just going to be two bars that are kind of connected to show that we're going to put together the two amounts. And this bar represents 8, and this one represents 3.1. And the idea is that I'm looking to put them together to get my answer. Now, step three, line up the decimals in order to evaluate. And that includes the digits and the place values as well. So I have 3.1 and I have 8. But 8's by itself, so you could think of that as 8.0. We decided this is an addition problem, and I'm just going to uh, add now that I have it all lined up. So 1 plus 0 is 1, 3 plus 8 is 11, so it's a 1 there and a 1 there, and then I always bring down the decimal where it belongs. So my final answer is 11.1. All right, let's take a look at another example. A dump truck is filled with 82.162 pounds of gravel. It drops off 77.219 pounds of gravel at a construction site. How much gravel is left in the truck? So again, step one, addition or subtraction. So I'm looking for keywords in here, and uh, one is drops off. Okay, let's highlight that because that sounds like I'm getting rid of something which might be like subtraction. Then we also have how much gravel is left. So I'm definitely removing something and something is left behind and all that points to this being a subtraction problem. And the keyword really um, you could say drops off is a keyword or words. Um, and even left is a keyword in this as well, I think. So a bar diagram for a subtraction problem looks a little bit different. Uh, in this case, I have this original amount, and I am dropping off or getting rid of some portion of that and then there's some portion that's left over and that's what I'm trying to find. So we have this 82.162 that I'm beginning with. I'm dropping off 77.219 and then I'm trying to find out what's left over in this box here. All right, so let's line up the decimals and line up the digits and see how this is going to work. Uh, so I'm going to write, this is, my first number is five digits long, so I'm going to start five boxes away, 82.162, and I'm subtracting 77.2. All right, this is going to be a little tricky. Okay, uh, I can't subtract 9 from 2, so I'm going to have to borrow from the 6 to make this a 12. 
that takes that down to 5. So 12 minus 9 is 3. Now I have 5 minus 1 is 4. I can't subtract 2 from 1, so I'm going to again, I'm going to have to borrow from this 2. And that becomes an 11. Uh, so 11 minus 2 is 9. I have 1 minus 7, I can't do that, so again, I'm going to have to borrow from this 8, make that a 7. That becomes an 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. And then 7 minus 7 is 0. Bring my decimal down. And my final answer is 4.943. So that was had a lot of uh, of carrying, and uh, you know, I, you may need some practice with that if you haven't done that in a while. And we'll get some more practice as we look at uh, further examples. So I'd like you to try the next uh, four problems, and for each of these problems, I want you to to do something a little bit different. I want you to first estimate what the answer is, and remember, there's a couple ways that you can do that, but just get an estimate of what the answer should look like. Do a quick bar model for it, and then uh, set up and line up your digits and your decimals and do the operation that the problem requires. So uh, again, I want you to pause the video here and try these next four problems and then restart it and I'll show you what the answers are. Okay, here are the answers for uh, the first two. They're both addition problems because of the words in the first one in all that you can see here. It tells me I'm combining them. And we have the same thing here. In all tells me that this is a addition problem. My bar graph is combining the two numbers in both places, right? And here are my answers. Now the sentence is really simple. Just use the language of the problem. Leslie bought 11.94 kilograms of fruit. In the second one, how much chocolate did she buy? Eve bought 1,298.775 ounces of chocolate. Again, keep it simple. All right, uh, let's take a look at the answers to the next two problems. Okay, here are the answers to the last two problems, and they turned out to be subtraction problems, and I knew that from the key term. Um, the farm used 28.85 gallons, which means we're taking it away, um, and then also the question is how much milk does the dairy farm have left? So that all points to this being a subtraction problem. Um, I estimated the answer would be four, and I did a little bar diagram. So when I actually set up and line up my digits in my decimals, I get 4.01 in my sentence. The dairy farm has 4.01 gallons of milk left. Same for the second one, um, uh, the class 8, 4.64 pounds of fruit. Okay, that word 8 lets me know that that's subtraction. Again, how much fruit is left. So I estimate uh, 7 minus 5 is 2. Line up my digits and my decimals. Do some subtraction, which is a little tricky because I had to borrow quite a bit. My final answer is 1.86. And my sentence is Tyler had 1.86 pounds of fruit left. All right, so um, there's a couple of problems like this in your uh, homework. And if there's time, there's also additional practice problems um, right after this in the packet as well. So let me know if you have any questions.